All right, we are recording live now. Hi, everybody. My name is Tasha Rollins. I am the creator of the Piece by Piece Parenting Program and founder of the Autism in Action Group. And today we are so excited. We've got an awesome special guest that we are going to interview live, uh, Miss Laura Bogardis with the Bogardis Research and Consulting. And um, Laura, how are you today? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, really, we just kind of want to hear all about the good stuff that you're doing in the community and the awesome organizations that you're working with and um, really educate our viewers on how they connect with other services that are out there and available for them and their families. Okay, so great. Mind, take a moment and just introduce yourself and uh, what services you offer through your consulting agency. Sure. So I've been, uh, I'm Laura Bogardis and I run Bogardis Research Consulting. Um, I've been working in Greenville uh, for, gosh, 20 years now uh, on anything having to do with employment barriers. So I, just to give you a, just a brief background, I've worked in career development, workforce development, and human resources for mm, close to 20, 25 years now. And um, uh, I'm a certified human resource professional through the Society for Human Resource Management, certified senior professional, um, and uh, really, really enjoy um, trying to uh, address any types of issues that keep people that want employment and employers that need uh, employees that anything that keeps those two groups apart um, I try to try to focus on what are where are those barriers where are those um, uh, uh, holes in that process and how can we overcome those holes so that's what intrigues me and that's what uh, I do as part of my business with Bogartis Research Consulting I also do some strategic planning for companies both private and nonprofits uh, I'll do also um, uh, some organizational management so you do quite a lot and come with a lot of years of expertise and professional insight. So that is amazing. That is really, truly yeah. amazing. And I'm still excited about it too. So I, I just, I find it a, a really interesting field. So you work uh, also with an organization in Greenville. Can you tell us a little bit about who they are and what they offer? Sure. So I've been contracted as an employment consultant for a group called Greenville Can. Um, Greenville Can is a really wonderful organization. It's, it's actually not an official organization. It's more of a collaboration of many different uh, individuals, organizations, um, companies, anybody that wants to achieve the mission for Greenville Can, which is to make Greenville a better place to live for people with disabilities and with people with, uh, uh, with disabilities. So, um, so Greenville Can gets involved in a, in a lot of different ways. Um, they don't really provide services so much, but they provide um, a platform for communication between lots of different agencies and lots of different organizations that uh, care about making Greenville a better place to live for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, they do some advocacy work. Um, they do a lot of uh, uh, trying to problem solve and kind of dig into some systems change types of issues. Um, they're interested in you know, things like education, employment, um, access uh, to recreation, access to uh, civic participation, um, many, many different areas of life that, you know, we all want to be involved in. So, um, so I, I really enjoy that group. Um, they are, they are uh, funded through um, the Barbara Stone Foundation, as well as some other foundations uh, and other grant sources for various things that they do. Awesome. Awesome. So what is, you already kind of touched on it just a little bit. What is your main mission in your career? In my career, it is really to help close gaps between uh, the needs of employers for a skilled workforce um, and individuals that are seeking to, to work and want to be part of, part of the workforce and uh, contribute, take care of themselves, their families, and, um, you know, just be part of the, the working society. And you actually touched on that a good bit in a TEDx talk that you did last year, right, in 2018. Yep. Um, and I believe that it was called, Why Would She Go Beyond EEO, right? right. That's correct. Um, is there any main points in that, or do you want to share anything about your experience with that? 
Well, doing a TED talk is a lot of work. Uh, it's 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 a big challenge and it's it's fun. Um, I uh, I think I wrote my speech and revised it probably nine, 10, 11 times uh, with a coach. The TEDx uh, Greenville provides you with a coach to, to kind of help. And, and it's a real interesting process because um, you only have a specific amount of time that you need to stay within that time frame and you cannot waste words. So basically your speech needs to be perfect uh, and memorized, but in a way that makes it sound like you're just talking. Yeah. So, so it's, very it's a great, articulate. <laughs> yeah, very, very. Um, but it was, a, it was a, a lot of fun. And I really enjoyed sharing my message, which was why we should go beyond EEO. And that's a message primarily to employers and uh, people that can influence employers uh, to say, hey, you know, we have an EEO or uh, equal employment opportunity uh, statement that uh, companies adhere to, which says we won't discriminate based on a number of different factors, um, you know, race, gender, religion, age, disability status, et cetera, veteran status, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and what, what I think is important is that that's really just the floor. That's just the baseline of what companies should do is not discriminate. However, they can do more to attract a more uh, diverse workforce and to be more inclusive overall in their, um, you know, within their workforce. So the talk that I gave was primarily about being more inclusive of people with disabilities and why that's a good thing, why that is, you know, benefit to your, to your business and to your customers and to your bottom line. Awesome, awesome. Um how did, do you have a backstory with working with the special needs population? Do you have, um, is there anything personally that kind of connected you there? Um, you know, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I'm very interested in, like I said, in, in anything that keeps people apart from jobs. Um, I strongly believe, and I, I uh, you know, really believe that um, having a job is a key part of, of life. And I think that it brings so much um, self-worth uh, to a person to be able to take care of themselves, to be able to earn, earn money, take care of family. Um, you know, it's a sense of pride and accomplishment uh, that you have when you are employed or when you're able to contribute in that manner. And so I have such a strong belief in that, that it seems it's troublesome to me that people um, can sometimes be left out of that, right. even when they want to be part of it. Uh, and it, it doesn't make sense to me. It, it's a wasted, wasted resource and wasted opportunity. So, um, you know, so I, I have a str strong support of anybody that is, is experiencing that type of a barrier of access uh, to employment. Um, people with disabilities, uh, I think, are one of the groups that experience, you know, this, this type of uh, difficulty. Um, the stats show that about, uh, though unemployment is very low right now, which is great, uh, the, the unemployment rate among people with disabilities is twice as high as it is among people without disabilities. Also, the labor participation rate, which means th the number of people, the percentage of people that are involved in the workforce that are, are either, either working or seeking work, mm -hmm. is only about a third of what it is uh, among people without disabilities. So, and I, and I don't believe that's because people don't want to work. I believe that's because people, you know, don't feel they have the same access uh, to employment or people are discouraged because they've tried and haven't had um, success with it, or they are just feeling lacking some supports that they might need to be successful in the employment arena. Um, so kind of a long story, but uh, you know, I'm just just very motivated by that by by that belief that I think everyone that wants to work should have the opportunity to do so. I think it's incredible that you have sought out such an amazing journey in your career to pursue that and help others learn how to do that. 
Um, how would, what would you recommend for family members of those that have special needs, autism, for finding sustainable employment currently? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a couple of recommendations. One, I, I would connect with a service provider organization. There are several service providers out there, um, it, such as, uh, I'll give an example, I'm not endorsing any one in particular, um, right. but uh, you know, there's, there's, small, there's large organizations, small, there's vocational rehabilitation. Uh, in Greenville, there's Thrive Upstate, which is a disability and special needs board organization. Um, there's Goodwill Industries, which is all over. Um, there's, uh, if you're a veteran you're, uh, with a disability, there's uh, State Warrior Solution. Um, in all of the colleges, there's an accessibility office, uh, student accessibility office, and I would, I would connect with them. Um, lots of smaller organizations uh, for mental health issues. There's uh, Gateway House. Um, there, I could keep going. <laughs> there's, there's quite a few. Um, but you know, I think having some support from a professional that um, can help direct or guide the family and the individual with disability to um, understand the steps to employment, I think that's helpful. I, I would caution, though, not to rely entirely on an agency to do that work, you know, for you or to basically hand you a job. Um, you know, certainly their, their job is to help you find opportunities, but again, many of these organizations, they have lots of clients and, you know, ultimately it's, it's up to the, to the individual themselves to, to get a job, um, to get that job and find it. So, yeah. so, you know, my first recommendation, work with a service provider, but my second and equally as important recommendation is don't rely just on that service provider, but start to, to do some self-reflection about, you know, where are my strengths? What kind of things do I enjoy doing? And what kind of things um, do I have to offer to an employer? So thinking about rather than what can employment do for me, what can I get out of it? Think about what can I contribute? What kind of skills, experiences, um, you know, traits, characteristics do I have that I can offer to an employer? Um, with that in mind, thinking about industry types and thinking about job types uh, within various industries is, is a good thing and a good next step. So you can think about what kind of skills and interests and experience and characteristics you have mm -hmm. and try to match that up with jobs that would utilize those types of skills. Um, and then again, it's also important to think about what are the things that I don't like to do or what are the things that I'm not so good at? And knowing that can help you steer clear of some jobs that, um, you know, would require you to do a lot of those right. things that you don't like to do or that you're, you're not so good at. So, um, you know, I think a healthy uh, reflection of, of where your strengths and, and weaknesses are um, and comparing that to the types of jobs that are, um, you know, out there. I think is, uh, is really helpful. Another thing I would focus on, that's two recommendations, so I'll give you a third. Uh, that is, don't rely too much on job searching on the internet, on um, like, not to call out Indeed, but you know, sites like Indeed. I, I think um, if you spend too much time doing that, you're gonna miss the, the primary way that people get jobs, which is through networking. So yes. the, the building. Yeah, the best thing to do is really, you know, once you've done that self reflection and once you've thought about, okay, what is it that's really that I have to offer? And, and even working on some of those skills too. I mean, if, you know, it, tell you the one, the number one skill is having a willingness to work and wanting to learn. So, you know, that's something that sometimes people need to work on a little bit before they go into employment. So, you know, that's, that's something you can improve on. And that's pretty much a universal skill. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, use your network, use people that, you know, maybe through your church or through your sports organizations that you participate in, or through your gym, or through your school, or through uh, mom or dad or uncle's or aunt's workplace, um, through your hairdresser or your barber. You know, there's lots of different um, people that we all know. And really the 
best thing to do is tell all those people that, you know, that I'm looking for a job or my son or my cousin is working for, is looking for a job. And these are the things he would be really great at doing. Um, and ask them for advice, ask them for uh, connections. And that is, you know, really the, the number one way to get a job. Incredible, incredible. Um, that was actually going to be my next question, which is for the special needs young adults watching, are there any specific employment skills that you feel greatest impact um, creating a positive, sustainable employment situation for them? And you touched on the willingness and the wanting to learn. Is there anything else that you can, can add to that? Well, I mean, a lot of it's here. You know, it's attitude. Are you, can you come to work with an, with an attitude, a positive attitude? Um, you know, that's a contagious thing. When we have a positive attitude, we have a can-do attitude, other people around us catch that energy and they feel it too. But when we come to work with, a, oh, you know, I don't want to be here or I don't, you know, I'm tired. I didn't sleep last night. I don't feel, I don't like this work or it's not important or whatever. That's catchy too. Mm -hmm. And that can dampen, you know, uh, your experience at, on the job and it can dampen everyone else around you. So I think, you know, the most important is being willing to show up, be reliable, be positive and learn. You know, we doing a job, especially a job for the very first time, you know, we're all nervous. We're all a little bit scared or intimidated that, gosh, well, I don't. I don't know what I don't know, but you have to be patient with yourself, give yourself some time to learn, but also try to come with a, with an open mind and attitude. Um, another thing is, you know, if you, if, if you have an issue or an, a need for something, let's say you, let's say that um, you can become overwhelmed by, um, maybe pressure or stress or loud noises or something like that that might occur in the workplace. It would be good to discuss those things with your supervisor or with your human resource um, professional or your manager uh, at work beforehand. And that way you can work out a plan for what to do, you know, if, if you should become overwhelmed at work. And, um, you know, we, we can work through lots of those things. Um, there is something called a, a reasonable accommodation request um, that you can, you can ask for. Um, if uh, there's any kind of tool that might make things easier for you at work uh, to perform your job, or even if it's not a tool, but it's just uh, maybe an environmental consideration or something like, um, some people work better when the lights are a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. And so that could be something that you discuss with your manager. Hey, um, you know, I, I'm enjoying my work. I, I could be, I could do a great job with this particular um, uh, work skill, but I, I allow or really high lights uh, are difficult for me. Um, would it be all right if we put a lower watt light bulb in this area? Or would it be all right if we just flip the lights off when I'm doing this particular work? You know, those are the kinds of things that doesn't cost the employer anything, but it's, it's basically a reasonable accommodation to help you, um, you know, deal with any kinds of um, um, issues that might be associated with your disability uh, that will help you, you know, do the job better. It's really interesting that something so small, tweaking something so little, can really change a person's outlook in having sustainable employment and just having access to financial resource. Um, mm -hmm. Like what you just said, a light bulb, you know, I'm going to add to that with some earplugs, sure. you know, anything like that, um, that could just very greatly impact somebody's life. So, um, thank you so much for being willing to join us today and sharing all this amazing information um, on how individuals can access uh, employment better, you know, how they can get out there and search for that and advocate for themselves and take responsibility, but also um, establish a network, a support network like what you were talking about um, by reaching out to those family members or their neighbors or, you know, mm -hmm. other church organizations that they're connected with already that maybe they just haven't 
thought about asking, you know, mm-hmm. word of mouth can go very far and someone always knows someone. It is a very small world. So uh, I, I can tell you, I've, I've, I don't think I've ever gotten a job in my whole career through a posting without having a net, you know, without networking. So mm-hmm. networking has been in, key to my entire career. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think it's something that you build your, your build through your family or through your, just yourself, your own efforts too. And the people that, you know, Um, I haven't always lived in, in South Carolina. So when I moved here, I knew no one, Uh, but that's something that, you know, built over time. Right. Right. And it does take time, right? All of these individuals out here, it takes time. It does. Um, It's not an overnight thing. Oftentimes we've got to learn right? What we need to get to where we're going. And then we go from point A to point B to point C. We don't skip A to Z. So um, that's a good point too. Right. You might want to, you know, my career goal may be to be the president of my own company, but I'm not going to start as president of my own company. I'm going to start maybe as a receptionist and maybe then I'm going to work up to um, an analyst and then work up to something else until I gain the skills I need to, to go out on my own, say. Absolutely. Well, thank you again so much for being willing to do this. I'm going to end the interview now. um, And hopefully, uh, maybe in the future, you can come back and share some additional information. We would love to have you. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate being here. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.